Okay, so we're back. And if you look closely here, you can see in the hole a little circle. And that circle that's lined up with the threads there is the detent from the set screw here. So what I like to do is I like to just get everything lined up close and then as I'm tightening it I like to wiggle it and make sure that the uh, phenolic in the brush holder is actually indeed in where the set screw used to be plus you can actually sight these when you have both brush holders in you can sight them to see that they're straight with each other and that will ensure that you're running those in as straight as possible so let me get these started and get them in and we'll be back okay so we're continuing on with our reassembly and we're gonna put our plate back on here we have eighth inch aluminum rivets let me see if how these set in place there I'm gonna go just like that on the plate and take our handy dandy set tool here and just like that that is set And here we go. So there we go. Plates back on. Nice new aluminum rivets. Just like it originally had. Looks good. So just to touch on the aluminum rivet driving tool. Uh, this is what we use, the M12 Milwaukee uh, rivet gun. Uh, I've used this a fair amount for this purpose, putting uh, plates back on the tools. And so far I've been pretty happy with it. I haven't driven any real large rivets with it, but it does come with a, a variety of different tips. Uh, I happen to be using the 8th inch tip right here. And it does have an extension collar as well that... Uh, I haven't used yet, but I do have one here in the shop just in case we need to get into a rough to reach spot. So there's just a look at the uh, quick look at the Milwaukee M12 rivet gun. Works nice on uh, setting rivets for these these old tools. Okay, and we're going back together here. So I thought I'd just show quick um, packing the bearings here. We got a nice layer of new grease. Packed. Now this is the recommended grease for a newer grinder of similar type. So this is a newer style grease that we've packed in here. Should be good to go. Here we have our rotor in and we have it set in the commutator end as you can see. Bearing set in place there. Everything looking nice and clean. There's the stator field, so everything's coming together on this. We got our nameplate back on there too, so just a quick little update there, going back together. We're going to get the, uh, the end on this thing first now. Okay, and we're back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the brushes back in this thing. So we're just going to find where it wants to sit here. There we go. And two brushes that are in here are still in great shape. Don't know if they're the originals or not, but you can see they're barely worn, same length. So that's a good sign. So we'll just put a brush in like that. Here's our brush retainer cap. These are in fine shape as well. And when you get these you want to get a screwdriver that fits these very snugly because uh, sometimes they can they can break on you so we want to be careful with that but first we want to get it started it is under spring tension so there we go okay just check that We'll tighten that up. 
don't have to kill those, you just want to get them snug. Rotate it a little bit there. Do the same thing over here. Slide the brush in. Brush retainer screw. And we'll just snug this one too. There we go. So now we can look at our commutator. And we can see the brushes are tracking nicely. We're actually putting a little bit of a mark there where the brushes ride. And they'll reseed in there. But we can see the line here where it's riding there and the line there. It's not into any high bar sections or anything like that that's going to create an issue. So I think we're good on that. Next up, we can put our plate back on. We are done in there. Okay, so I'm opting for a Allen roundhead screw what I have here in the shop and I want to reuse the old screws uh, but if you do one of these use whatever screws you want to use you can reuse the old ones or put in new ones just gotta get it started here okay we're coming in on the home stretch on this project here and what we're gonna do is get some rings on this we have nice new number six fasteners that are brass that we're going to put in there. And one of the things that you want to watch is always inspect your fasteners. There's one we got right out of the box. You can see threads aren't cut all the way. There's a good one see it's got good threads all the way on it so always check your fasteners luckily we weren't somewhere out in the middle of nowhere and found we had a bad one so now we'll get going on this get our crimp connectors on A little tough to get all this in there, but we'll wor we'll work it out. Okay, there we go. We got her just about where we want her, so we'll start to squeeze it. Just like that. We will s then get our shrink tubing up over the crimp connector. and we'll shrink that down a little extra protection. Now this wire was previously stripped and uh, I really don't want to strip it again. I'm a little concerned these might be borderline short as they are so we don't want to make them any shorter. So we'll get that in the die again we go. Whoop, almost pulled it off. Once again, we'll slide the shrink tubing up over top. And with shrink tubing comes a heat shrink gun. I am using the uh, cordless variety. And we're going to try out one of these nifty deflectors.
seems to work pretty well. Actually pretty hot. Okay, so now that we got these set, what we can do is try and get them bent. Get them landed on the switch. You can see there's our fastener point there. And we'll get these guys attached to here. And uh, I probably have a whole lot of hands fumbling in front of the camera, so let me get these going here and we'll be back. Okay, so I thought we'd come back quick. We can see we got our wires landed here on this guy. Uh, that's turning out nice. They fit in there nicely, the switch fits. And we got these cut to length. So before we strip them or put the connectors on, we're going to put our shrink tubing over top of them. And we'll have much of the same, uh, just more hands blocking the video. So we'll be back once we have at least the ground landed, and we'll take a look at the switch then. Thought I'd come back quick. We're using our uh, T and B crimper here. That's uh, a ratcheting style crimper, and it's uh, it's working good. So I, I do like these crimpers. Uh, you can see we're getting a nice indentation in here and uh, nice crimp and the shrink tubing obviously fits over top of that nicely it should give us a nice clean installation and we're back with our heat gun we're gonna shrink the tubing here I gotta say, I think this uh, cover here for the heat gun makes a big difference in the performance of the uh, battery heat gun. So now what we'll do is we'll get our wires shaped here a little bit better and we'll be back. Okay, so we got our switch wired in, a little hard to see, but we got our cables all stacked here that they fall down inside. Gotta get our two screws in and you know the plate always with these uh, flathead screws is how do you uh, get them started well we're gonna use a holding screwdriver which basically is two wedges that are on an angle I don't know if you can see that or not there you go and when you slide this collar up the wedge you can see it's splayed out there it expands how those sit and it tightens on the fastener. So we're going to use our holding screwdriver here. Get our fastener started. There we go. And once it's started, I like to take them off because they're not really meant for tightening screws, they're just meant for starting screws. So it's as easy as uh, getting it screw on the head and sliding the handle up here with your thumb and now you can see we're wedged not going to lose the screw there we go started we just remove the screwdriver now that we got them tightened we can start it we can just use a regular screwdriver to tighten them up And there we go. So now we can stuff our wires down in here. They're sitting nicely. See how our cover goes on. 
Well, that goes on quite nice, just like that. Just like it was supposed to. So let's take a look here at what we got with our wires. We got our ground kind of buried in there, but you can see it. There's our ground attached to the casement of the entire thing. So we got a real good ground and we just have our neutral and our hot laid in there attached to the switch. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the remaining parts here. So we have two uh, rubber washers. We have a retaining bushing, and we have a nut. We also happen to have two wrenches, grinding stone, incidentally the maximum speed of this tool is 4000 RPMs. So we'll be sure to make sure we have a grinding stone that is within that tolerance. And we have our safety guard. So let's get the safety guard on here so we can uh, have that in place for when we get everything else put together. So first, we're going to put on a, a rubber washer. And these have a nice snug fit onto the spindle here. And our grinding wheel. Now this one here comes with multiple inserts to put it on various size spindles, which is kind of nice. And we're a 5 8 spindle in this case, so we have the proper number of um, pieces removed so that we can get this on our 5.8 spindle and now that that's on we blew out the picture but you get the idea we'll put this other washer on put on the uh, retaining collar and thread on our nut Now that's stacking just right. Uh, we got just a little bit of thread peeking out the end there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our keyway lined up. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we have our keyway right here. We're gonna get that lined up so we can grab it with the, uh, the wrench. And then we're gonna tighten the, the nut up. So there we go, we got the rubbers crushed. Don't think you can see really any of this. So we'll, we'll take some pictures and show them then. But uh, let me get this guard set and we'll be back. Okay, we're back, so we got everything together here. Everything's free, nothing's rubbing, everything's tight. I think we're ready for the part everybody wants to see. I will take some pictures of uh, every, how everything fit up here was a little weird we ended up using a 13 millimeter socket because uh, this is a new guard so it felt kind of weird using a metric uh, socket on this tool from the 50s or 60s <laughs> so uh, but I was just thrilled that I was able to get the part and um, get this thing back in service so good idea to have a guard on it this thing's gonna have one heck of a you know it's got a one inch wide stone on it. I mean, that's a one inch by six inch. So that's a pretty serious amount of grinding that this thing should be able to do. So uh, let's see if I can get a setup here and we'll do some test grinds with it. Okay, so here we go. We got the workpiece here. We're gonna test out on the vise and we have safety glasses on and hearing protection because this thing's gonna be loud. Here we go.
Okay, here we go. We'll try it the other way. It's working really nice. Uh, one thing I noticed when we started grinding, it was a little skippy, but we had to uh, level the stone out. So now that we got the stone leveled out, So now we got the stone leveled out, we got nice control over the workpiece and the grinder, and this thing works great. Okay, so here we go, here's our follow-up segment on measuring the restored grinder. So we saw what the numbers were originally, maybe I'll insert a screenshot of what it was, and we can compare them. So now we'll get our Megger hooked back up here. There we go, we're hooked up. Get that somewhere safe out of the way. Nice new cord and varnished tool. Go to 125 volt test. What do we get? Maximum scale reading. So it appears as though the insulation that we added to the tool helped it out. Who could ask for more? We, uh, we also have a nice new cord and you saw when we rewired the tool we had a very good ground. We knew we got a good ground in it now. We don't know how good that was before but uh, nothing's actually grounded out in the tool. We can see that. So excellent test here progress in all ways. Okay and we're back so we have on here a piece of reflective tape hopefully I will not catch the uh, pin here and the reflector and see what happens. Um, I did a little test run we'll see if it works but let's see uh, see what we can do here. So I think this would probably still keep climbing a little bit, but you can see as these old tools run, uh, they do speed up a little bit, they heat up. Um, there is starting to get some heat in the tool. Nothing overly hot, but that's what's to be expected when they run in a little bit. Uh, grease is getting more fluid, running around places, a little less uh, resistance within it. So pretty close to the rated 4000 RPM, just about 300 off. and. Like I say, as we're running, we might actually get close to that, but uh, there we go. Um, test with a Vita root. Turned out pretty good. That about does it for this restoration uh, on this tool. Uh, this is going to be ready for use here in the shop. When we need a serious grinder, we're going to have one. So uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Yeah.